Supply elasticity of demand tells us the sensitivity of demand to price changes. For normal goods, as the price increases, demand will fall, and vice versa. For products whose prices change a lot, but demand does not change much, we call inelastic. How inelastic or elastic a product is, is determined by a number of factors. In the table below, we can see some of those. On the left hand side, for the elastic goods, it's usually a want that makes them elastic. An inelastic is a need, like water. Elastic, the product can be substituted very easily, orange juice, say for apple juice. And inelastic, it can't be, so water, for example. There are other things also that contribute to the elasticity of something. If it's very expensive relative to your income, you'll be quite price sensitive. If it's cheap relative to your income, you won't be. The final factor is whether the good is branded or unbranded. If a good is unbranded, it's likely to be quite elastic. If it's got strong branding, then it'll be inelastic. If we look at price elasticity of demand on a standard demand diagram, what we'll see is that the price elasticity varies depending on the steepness of the line. If it's very, very steep, the product will be inelastic. If it's very, very shallow, it will be elastic. A nice way to remember this is inelastic looks like an I and elastic looks like an E as shown on the graph in a second. Sometimes it's easier to look at a particular product. Let's look at petrol. A petrol is price inelastic, which means a large change in price will only produce a small change in the quantity demanded. Here we can show that by the area in red, and then finally the area in green. So increasing prices would be the right course of action for this producer. Price elasticity of demand can be calculated precisely using the formula below. PD equals the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price. If the result is less than one, it's inelastic. If it's greater than one, then it's elastic. Normal goods will always have a negative PED as price and demand move in opposite directions. If the PED is exactly equal to 1, then we say it has unitary elasticity. Let's look at how PED can vary along a demand curve. Here we have a reduction in price from 9 to $8. This is a percentage change of 11.1. .1. Now the change in quantity is that it's doubled, which is a 100% change. So 100% divided by 11.1 .1 equals 9, which is highly elastic. Let's have a look at the other end of the diagram. Here we have price reducing from $3 down to $2, and quantity rising from 7 to 8. If we then plug in the numbers to the formula, we end up with a PED of around 0.38, which is highly inelastic. If we were to take values from the middle of this graph, it would turn out that it was around unitary elasticity. So what we've got here is elasticity varying along a standard demand curve. Let's have another look at how elasticity varies along the demand curve. We know that it's elastic at the top, inelastic at the bottom, and unitary elasticity in the middle. But what if you want the whole diagram to show unitary elasticity? What would that look like? Well, the line would be bent inwards as shown on the diagram and you would have unitary elasticity all the way down the demand curve from the top right to the bottom. Now we don't usually draw diagrams like this, but it's worth knowing that this would be what a unitary would actually look like. If you found this video useful, you might want to consider my course on Udemy. It covers everything in micro and macroeconomics at the pre-university level, so A-level or AP study. To access the course, click on the link below in the description.